Russia has a geography problem, and one that's not going away anytime soon. But in recent years, Vladimir Putin has hatched a plan to re-establish the country's economic, military, and political power projection in an unusual way. A dangerously risky master plan involving global warming and nuclear torpedoes. The story's a winding one, and it gets fairly intense. So buckle up, stick with me, and let's dive in. Russia has been struggling to overcome its geographic limitations for centuries. As a giant landmass in the frigid north, surrounded by the historically powerful regions of Western Europe and China, Russia has always faced a uniquely interesting problem, the cold. While most countries have easy access to ports for trading goods on the sea year-round, Russia's ocean access is so far north that they freeze up and become unusable for much of the year. This gives Russia less access to trade and makes its economy lose out as countries ship along other trade routes. Consider the Suez Canal, now world famous for its recent problem with the trapped cargo ship. On any given day of the year, 12% of global trade passes through that canal alone, generating billions of dollars and significant geopolitical power for Egypt. And when the canal was blocked, ships were rerouted around the Cape of Good Hope, bringing that economic and political power to South Africa for a short time. This is a long-standing historical problem. How can Europe and Asia trade with each other? Let's dive into a bit of history here. Don't worry, I promise this will connect back to Russia's new weapons program soon. Originally, Europe would trade with Asia via the Silk Road, across the land to China. But when this path was blocked by the Ottoman Empire in the 15th century, Europeans had to seek other routes. The long path around Africa became more popular then. But as you might expect from the sheer distance, it's not exactly an easy route for overseas trade, even today. Seeking a new route was why Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. But as you know, he never made it to Asia, because it turned out there were some Americas in the way. But eventually, the Suez Canal was built, and the Ottoman Empire fell after World War I, reopening that most convenient of sea routes for trading. As an interesting side note, this whole situation and the economic political power that comes from controlling trade is exactly why China is now investing hundreds of billions of dollars into its Belt and Road Initiative to revive the old land-based Silk Road trading route. But where is Russia in all of this? Well, that whole time all of these circumstances were evolving on the world stage, Russia actually had the fastest ocean route between Europe and Asia the whole time. But unfortunately for them, this super helpful secret trade route goes straight through the Arctic, which makes it less than ideal for shipping things. Russia tried expanding its own borders down to the Korean Peninsula to get better port access back in 1904, as you'll know well if you've ever watched History of Japan. And Russia rushes in out of nowhere and says, Stop, no, you can't take that. We were going to build a railroad through here to try and get some warm water. But they were defeated in a war by the Japanese and forced to remain locked in the cold north. So Russia's history of controlling international trade routes is virtually non-existent. Or at least, it was until now. In 2020, Vladimir Putin signed Russia's new plan to take control of international trade, deploying millions of Russian citizens to occupy the Arctic Circle along with new ice-cutting ships and a stated goal to expand the northern shipping route to 80 million tons of cargo per year by 2024. In this quest to create the world's next dominant trade route, Putin is relying on the impacts of global warming. As the globe heats up, Arctic ice melts, and shipping through the north becomes easier and easier. Russia currently outputs 5% of the world's greenhouse gases, making it the fourth largest contributor to global warming, after the United States, China, and India, all countries now unwittingly undermining their own trade routes. But of course, it doesn't stop with trade. The Arctic is rich with the natural resources of precious minerals, natural gas, oil, and fish, all key parts of the Russian economy which Putin hopes to expand. Now wait, you might say, wouldn't the United States, Canada, and other powerful countries bordering the Arctic Circle oppose Russia's takeover? Well, this is something Putin is taking into account now. Russia is already declaring itself as a peaceful global manager of the Arctic while also claiming that the Arctic naturally belongs to Russia due to the country's long northern coastline. 
But Vladimir Putin and the Russian government are also hedging their claim, in case it's challenged in any serious way. In recent years, Russia has had a massive buildup of traditional military infrastructure and personnel in the Arctic Circle. But there's also a dangerous new development. In 2019, Vladimir Putin officially announced the creation of a new Russian weapon, the Poseidon Underwater Nuclear Torpedo Drum. Designed as a deterrent against opposition to Russia's Arctic expansion, the torpedo is currently in the final stages of testing and expected to be deployed to certain Russian naval ships by the summer of 2022. The torpedo itself is a self-guided underwater drone, carrying a 2 megaton nuclear warhead. That's roughly 100 times more powerful than the nuclear bombs used in World War II. The proposed use for this new weapon would be for it to trigger underwater and create a massive radioactive tsunami thousands of miles across. For reference, that's big enough to cover the entire east coast of the United States, cause unimaginable damage, and render most of it uninhabitable for a long time due to radiation. For reference, the explosion I'm talking about now would be 60,000 times more powerful than the one currently shown on the screen. Now, at this point, you might be feeling very worried about this, understandably so. And you're probably wondering whatever happened to that idea of mutually assured destruction that stopped us from these sort of problems during the Cold War. Well, you're right for thinking that. So before worrying too much about this crazy development, be assured that military experts are calling this out as a political pressure tactic more than an actual weapon usable for war. The nuclear explosives in the torpedo are similar to the intercontinental air-based missiles many countries have already had for years as defensive deterrents rather than for actual use. The coast-threatening radioactive tidal wave is scary for sure, but also highly impractical overkill when compared with more conventional weapons. Because of these factors, military experts assess that this highly publicized move by Russia is first and foremost a very dangerous publicity stunt to project power and to threaten countries that may oppose their growing control of the North. The likelihood of this new weapon ever being used in any actual military context is exceedingly low, but the message that it sends is loud and clear. And whatever the true purpose of this development, it's definitely still a dangerous one for the world. As ice in the north melts, the Arctic Circle is primed to become the next South China Sea standoff, or worse. So if you needed one more reason to fight against global warming and the climate crisis, here's a good one for your list. But thanks for watching. I know this was a more intense topic than what I usually cover, but it's still very important, so I hope you found it interesting. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time to learn something new.